are um, views that uh, that you use often when you're when you're using when you're doing source view trace in ZTPFGI. Um, so the things we uh, plan to cover today are the uh, variables view. We'll have a C C++ example and an assembler example. Then the watches view. Um, again, we'll have examples from both languages. And then we'll, uh, along the way, as we do those things, if we see something else that um, might help you that needs explanation, we'll also cover that. And then we'll look at what about when you don't need um, you know, the full power of the variables in watches view, um, how to debug and, and source view without them, possible advantage of doing that, and um, some things you need to understand about ZTPFGI layouts, and then finally hitting smart variable tooltips. So I'm going to switch to my um, other display. OK, we're already connected to a system. We have um, locked in a C++ program for trace. Here, we're prepared to lock in a, uh, an assembler file for trace to do the, ex the assembler examples. I'm going to, um, let's start off with, with uh, the simple use of the variables view. So just to set the stage, right now we're, we're in the default layout. When we switch over to the, um, when we switch over to source view trace, we'll be in the debug layout the window layout will be slightly different. Very similar, but slightly different. So we're going to create, I'm going to, I've just got a very simple example here, very, just to illustrate things. So we're going to enter this by doing create ECB and enter the program. OK. We are stopped here. Um, and so what I'd like to show you first let me take off this breakpoint, is a very simple example with these uh, integer variables. Now you can see we're stopped here. In the variables view, which is what we'll concentrate on first, you can see it says i and j. These are the local variables that are available here. Um, but they're not in scope yet. Actually, um, they're not, uh, they haven't received their um, values uh, from the from the program yet so it says error we can't get these we can't get these values yet but that's normal that's nothing to worry about we're going to step in down here let's see go back to where we were okay okay let's try this again I had a break point I shouldn't have had. Here we go. OK, here we are. So now we've reached um, where we're going to assign seven I, 17 to I. As you can see, uh, the um, the addresses of these variables are recognized by us so that we can get, but their values have not been initialized yet. So as we step in, we see that 17 has been assigned to i. Since the variable has changed, the variable's view shows it um, in with a red background. Now, um, just a very simple example. You would never do this in real life. We're going to say, if i is less than 18, we're going to enter this branch. and uh, um, the value of i is being changed. The value of j was changed. You can see they update in red as this happens. And we're down to the bottom. So I'm going to start, off, start, uh, start this off again and show the other branch, because that's one of the advantages of uh, the variables view, is that you can edit the value of the variable in order to take a different branch and test the other branch. So we're going to create the ECB again. I, I, I noticed that I have a breakpoint there, so I'll just run to that breakpoint. 
Okay. So now we are going to, we've got I is 17, but we don't want it to be 17. So we can go over here. Now, uh, when you select that, you can just start typing if you like. I'm going to make it 18, so we'll hit the other branch. Hit Enter. It's gone off to the host. The debugger has changed the value. It's come back, and the value is now 18. Um, so now we'll take the other branch. And you can see we're in the other branch. Now there's something to, um, so like if there, there was a path here that you needed to test, you could test that. Something else to talk about here, um, again, this would not be good programming practice, but, but we have declared another variable i in this small scope here from line 118 to line 121. There's another i that's valid. So what the variables view does is now it shows two i's. The first i is the one that's nearest in scope to you. It hasn't been assigned a value yet, so it, the um, just sort of the garbage value in the, in the variable is negative 1. Um, that other i in the outer scope still exists. Its value is still 18. So now we step 2 is assigned to this i within this scope. And j is still from the outer scope. And it receives, it, the outer scope j receives that value. And we're done there. So um, that, um, what you, you may actually see, um, you, you probably won't give all your variables the same name. <laughs> Hopefully, we avoid that. But um, you may certainly have variables declared in inner scopes inside of the, um, inside of the program. And if you do, that's how the variables view will behave. It will allow you to access both of them. I'm going to exit this so that we can hit a more complex example. We're going to come up here now. We thought we were going to come up there. OK. Let's tell them we're serious about coming up there. OK, I apologize for that. We will get up there. There may be a bug um, in the breakpoint code on this program. Let's step into that. OK, here we are. So now you can see there's four variables in the local scope. If there was a parameter passed to this uh, routine, it would also be uh, show up over here as a local variable. You can see, uh, just to mention something I didn't mention before, global variables, that is, variables outside of the scope of, of this current function, don't show up in the variables view. If you want to see those, you can use the watch expressions view, which we'll get to in a, in a few moments. Now, um, the more complex examples here are that we've got uh, structs, which could be classes. We've got a class, too, defined here. So I'm going to run down to this breakpoint so that these uh, values get defined. And you can see they've changed, so they're, um, they've turned red. Now P my type is a structure which contains nested structures. And um, the variables view allows you to go down to any depth to change those things. Um, while we're here, let me show you a few different types of variables. We, uh, well, let me show you the pointer to the character. We already looked at integer and how to change it. For characters, uh, I mean for strings, if you want to change those, you can type the double quotes and enter. 
and uh, the value changes. You can also see this character by character as an array. If you open that up, if you want to change just uh, just one character, uh, and I, yeah, let's just say it had an E on the end, then you would use the single tick marks around the E and change that. You could also do uh, do it as decimal. I mean. Um, binary if you wanted to. What I'm, what I'm saying is hexadecimal. All right. Um, and you could put that in as a number. If you were more com there would be no reason to do that, but if you're more comfortable doing that, you could. Um, so now, um, something else to show here is um, you can switch between decimal and hexadecimal view. I want I want to show you um, on P extra now um, no no P my type now P my type what we've done is we've allocated actually an array of five because this is a pointer um, it's very common in C plus plus to RC to um, have a pointer to one of a thing and allocate many more and that's what's happened here we've actually um, we've actually pointed to the first one but but uh, it's a, we're actually pointing to an array of five so the question is how do you see that in the variables view you can do that and because if you go over and we see p my type um, the um, the debugger doesn't know that there are five you know that there are five, and the variables view does allow you to look at the five if you want to. What we can do is right-click the, the pointer and say enlarge shrink range. When you do that, you see the current range is one. We think there's just one. We can say five. And now it shows it to us as an array of five. Here's the first one, the one we were looking at where we changed it to uh, a nonsense name now. Um, the others are available here. You can see that um, in a loop in this in this toy program, we went through and we assigned um, values to age. Like the 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 uh, first one, we assigned one to age. The second, we assigned two to age. The second, we assigned that's just a sanity check we, I put into this example to make sure we are looking at the right thing. So yes, we have expanded the array and we are seeing the correct thing. So um, I'm going to put the range back to one. <clears throat> okay. Continuing on with this, this, this example, we're about to step into the constructor for a class. I'm going to step in. And what I wanted to show you was that um, when you're in a constructor in ZTPFGI, you don't see the local, the local variables view does not apply to the constructor. When you get to other, um, uh, other, other methods, other uh, member functions in the, cons in the class, you will see the you will see the variables. We just simply don't have the information to show the variables in the constructor. So I just wanted to uh, point that out to you um, in case you run into that situation and you're wondering what's going on. We've now gone into a different um, method of the class where we're returning the count, and you can see that um, because we know it's a class, we are showing the this pointer and you can use the, the this pointer to look at the fields in the class and you could change that if you wanted to. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, now um, moving on to, let's move on to assembler and see how the variables view behaves with the symbol. So we're going to add this assembler program to trace. OK. 
Okay, it's added in now. You can see from the lock, the lock icon that it's added into Trace. We're going to enter this program simply also. And here we are. So now the variables view in Assembler, what we do is we show the registers. So here's R0 through R15. And if there are any uh, usings associated uh, with those registers, we show the name of the desect or the macro um, in parentheses beside the register name. You can, um, you can expand the, uh, the register and it's just like looking at a, at a structure and see, and you can see all the fields that are in the, um, in the DSEC. That's if there's currently a using for the register. If there's not, we just show the, the register value. Um, underneath the registers, we show the fields that are used in the program. So you don't use all the fields in um, EB0, EB in every program. But this program happens to be using um, these fields. It's also using EB0, EB itself, so we have that here as well. And if you wanted to, you could go in and change these just like you could in C++. So I can tell from looking at this, I mean, I could, I could put, um, I could do it with a hexadecimal number. Um, I could do it with a decimal number if I wanted to. And um, you can also, you can also expand, you can also uh, do it as character here, depending on the type of field that you've got. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, these, these are the uh, tags that appear in the program. Um, although, um, just like in C++, the tags would get um, uh, appear and disappear according to scope, usually the tags are the full scope. So usually you'll see the tags um, throughout the whole scope of the program. They'll be over here in the variables view. Um, okay, so let's step in a little and see a few things change over here. You can see that the variables um, change just like in C++ as they're updated. Um, let me go back to um, C++ and look at the watches, watch expressions view. Now in the watch expressions view, you can see the local variables if you want. You can see um, variables that are outside of the scope of any function. Um, you can also do expressions. You're not limited to just simple variable names. Although most of the time, that's, w that's what you would use. Um, if you wanted to use an expression, you could. That is something plus something else, something divided by something else, something multiplied by something else, or um, um, an array, uh, for example, with an index. You can do that. So um, let me step here, step into here. <clears throat> we'll add. Um, if you want to add something to the watch expressions view, you can either just go over and type it. So I can say P extra. There we are, and you get a view um, really identical to the one you get in the variables view. Or I'll delete that item. You can just right click it. You don't have to select it. You can just right click it and say add watch cursor, and you get the same thing. Now if you if you do want to select something, let me run to the next breakpoint, you can. So if I want to see P my type 0, or let's say I want to see P my type 1, and I just want to keep a watch on that, I can say add watch a cursor. I've selected the entire thing, and now we can see uh, that. If I wanted to get more specific and look just at age, I could have done that. And now we can see age. And we could see that update. 
Um, and um, you can edit these values just like you could in the variables view. Um, let's see. This is something I missed uh, talking to you about in the variables view. When you right click on a variable or, or a watch expression, you can say X core. This will take the address of the variable, that is, this, this address right here, and it will look at that address. So this is, if you want to see the values um, in this format, you can. Um, since this is a pointer, we can also say x core on p extra is a pointer. Now we're not looking at the address right here. What we're looking at, and um, what we're looking at is the address um, that that points to. So you can go in and, and, and view it and edit it that way. small example of the kinds of expressions you can do. If I wanted to say, um, let's see, I has a, what is the I value of I right now? I is 5. So if I wanted to say P my age, and I wanted to, let's make I 4, let's make I 4. This is useful. If you want to watch every item in, a, in, a, in an array while you are stepping through, and you want to just see the current value of, of, in the array that you're processing. You could put I into a watch expression, see like that, and then you'd see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 until you got to the end. And you could see the values of age. You could also do it up here. Watch the, um, watch the structure while you're stepping through each of those. I happens to be 4, but in the loop, of course, I would keep changing and then you could see, keep seeing the current value of i. So that's very useful. Something I don't know if you would find useful, you can, um, you can multiply by various numbers. You can um, take those numbers. I just want to give you an example of a few things you can do in case it comes in handy. And um, you can add 7, and you can divide by 3, and so forth. Now. Um, this is probably, just one more thing to show you, just for completeness. This is probably a, um, a float value. Um, so you can cast it as a, as a double, for example, and, and look at it. No, it came out even. OK. <clears throat> OK, so that's um, the watch expressions in C++. Let's quickly move over and look at the watch expressions in Assembler. Assembler uses, um, for its watch expressions, it still uses a C++ uh, format for formatting the pointers and things like that. Let me clear this out. OK. So here we are. Now, <clears throat> I can come down here and I can say, um, say um, copy to watches. Now I've got, because this is a tag that was listed separately, it just puts it in simply as IDE CRCC. Um, if I'm, the same thing would be true for, for EBW000. If I come to the uh, R9, um, uh, to R9, where those values are also listed but nested between, behind, beneath R9, if I say right-click and say add to copy to watches, what we get is, and you, this is um, the C++ format. We're dereferencing R9, um, and then we're addressing the field EBW000. It's exactly the same thing as up here. Once you make you make you aware that um, if you need to hand type something, you can do it. You can do it, um, but you'll want to, um, this is an equivalent expression in C++. Um, you might, but if it's, if it's a field you want to see below R9, you want to put it in the watches, 
uh, maybe for some reason you can't figure out how to get up there or you just want to type it real fast, you can use the pointer uh, formatting from C++ and put it up there. Um, okay. I see we are almost at 30 minutes. This has actually gone a lot, uh, a lot more quickly than I anticipated. Let me, let me talk to you about what to do if you don't want to use the watch expressions in the variables view because you don't need all the power they bring. So let me um, once again enter the C++ program. And I failed to do that. I mean, I en entered the wrong program. OK. OK. We're up at our break point. Now, uh, in fact, let me, let me come back here. Oops. Yeah should have been a little simpler. Let me come back to our program I want to get to this example before we have to stop. Step in up here. Okay. Now why would you not want the watches and the variables showing? It does slow down the stepping slightly because when you have those views showing we do request those values every time the requests go to the debugger. Debugger, you know, sends the core back to the back to the PC client. The PC client interprets it and shows it to you. So that does take some time. So I'm going to be hitting F10 now. And um, if you watch um, this indicator up here with the, the power indicator, you'll see the messages going in and coming back. You can see, you can see there's several requests that have to go in. And that, that's just a small delay before the F10 goes in. It's, it's not too big a price to pay if you want the, the power of these views. But what if, what if you don't need it right now? Well, if you don't need it, you can just close the views. Now I'm going to step. Uh, let's see. Make sure I'm stepping. Yeah. Now you can see uh, there's like zero requests going in. And um, I'm pressing F10, and it's going much faster. So that's a tip, and I, I, I think that's a, that's a feature we put in recently. I think that's, that's good. Let me exit again. Well, no, I don't have to exit again. OK, but if you don't have the variables and watch expressions view showing, how do you look at the variables? You can hover over them. So um, I'm hovering, and there are hot spots if it's a structure that you can look at. So you can end up looking at everything you want to look at. You can't edit it, but most of the time you don't need to edit it. So actually, that's a pretty good deal. If you don't want to, uh, if you want to speed things up a little bit. Now, what if? Okay, what if you've done that? You're very happy, but you want the watch expressions and the variables view back. Uh, there are buttons up here to bring those back. No. Um. Okay. Uh, we didn't cover quite as much as I wanted to, but um, I think we've covered everything we have in the time. Uh, uh, please, if you have any questions, let us know, um, I, and I'll try to answer them right now. Thanks, Ed. That was an informative session. Now the session is open for your questions. Feel free to ask any questions or doubts to our presenter over here. Mark, you're unmuted. You can ask the question. Yeah, I've been tracing. Thank you. Uh, I've been uh, tracing through some SPMs, and 
Uh, for some reason, I don't see some of the variables displaying, you know, especially within the, the scope of what I'm tracing. Is that a bug, or is there a special way to do SPMs? Um, uh, what is this? Is this a? Uh, is this? Are these local variables? Uh, are yes. they within this? Okay. Um, is this a C program or C plus uh, plus? Assembler SPM. Oh, assembler SPM. Oh, okay. You don't see some of them. Um, well, um, I would say if you don't see them, there's there's a good chance it's a bug. And um, now, um, are they are they um, tags like we were showing in our um, in our uh, in our example, or were you looking for? Um, yeah, I mean a tag, uh, a tag. Okay. Um, yeah, if the tags aren't showing, um, is it possible they aren't in scope yet? No, they're in scope. Okay. And I'm tracing right where they're being uh, queried or modified, and I still can't see them. Then I, th I think our, our support would definitely want to look at that. And um, Yeah, I do have a JIRA open right now, so. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I'll look for that. Um, that um, that report. So you, you reported it to our support people. So um, we'll look at that and um, try to get back to you. And we will get back to you on that. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, sure. And there's another question from Long Dog. You're unmuted. You can ask the question directly to the presenter. Hi. Hi. Can you show me how to add uh, to the watch list using a register and displacement? Um, do a watch using the register and displacement. Um, I don't think we can do that right now. Um, I can, um, but it's, it's obviously a good idea. Um, I think we would um, need to support a slightly different notation for that, but um, I'm going to um, write that down as, a, as an item to look at doing. Um, can, can you... Um, could could you uh, send me the um, or or send uh, TPF software the uh, the kind of notation you would like to use for that register and displacement? Okay, real time. Okay, thanks. Um, um, my my email is ed jordan at tpfsoftware dot com if you want to send it to me, or you could or you could contact them. Uh, or you could go through channels at your at your company if you want to, um, but I, we we'd be happy to take that down and look at supporting that. Okay. All right. Um, are there more questions? Lon, do you want to ask anything for in further to uh, add? I'm fine now. Okay. You can always send your questions or queries to our, your support executive or, or a customer or support manager over there, would in, uh, and we'll be happy to help you on that. Um, Ed, I don't see any more questions. Um, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I mean, let me take this opportunity to thank people for being so patient with this, and um, and I hope um, if you have any other questions, you'll let us know. <laughs>